Okay, my friends, they finally did it. They proved exactly what I was talking about. They created an impossible light sensor with an efficiency of 200%. Now, they're using transition metals and they're using pulsed laser. Now, what they did was they produced a sensor that gets an astonishing 200% efficiency which basically seems impossible but it's because of quantum physics now i understand what it's doing and it's because of the pulsation of the dark particles against the light particles in what's called a photodiode and yet they're exactly correct all right now um they don't really understand yet why this is working wait a second let me find well here's here's what this is the most important part to push the figure higher of efficiency, they added green light, which was introduced. The sensor was also optimized to improve its ability to filter different types of light. When they say filter different types of light, that means to absorb them or let them pass. And it responded to no light at all. This pushed the quantum efficiency of the photodiode past 200%, although at this stage, it's not clear exactly why that boost is happening. Well, I can tell you primarily why it's happening is because of transition metal perscovite layers that they're putting on these receivers. And all they did was add another green light or you know we use the different lights here let me show you something green is much more powerful than red you see this these are two of them at the same time going through the same venturi the red just gets pushed out of the way the green not only concusses here but concusses way out there is a huge increase in energy and the blue is even more energetic than that the blue is this one here look at this when it came out of venturi you can't even tell there's two white particles there as it slows down, you can just barely see it over here. That that's, it is the same particle. They're all the same particle. The green, the red, and the blue. Uh, but they're just much more powerful when you get up in the blue range. But here we can easily show that we separated the black from the white and created fission and fusion. This is fission at this side fusion when they come back together and this is this is basically a subatomic nuclear explosion and the black particles keep slamming the white ones and and they keep pushing them until they have nowhere else to go but through there and then after they go through there they should go through our diode which once they get pulsed through there boom 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 these are going to be pulsed now it depends on how many pulses and how many, you know, you might have about three or four, five lasers, whatever, shooting down here at the same time, different angles, but they all converge and then through this here. And all the black ones at the same time banging all these different frequencies of black, you could almost just push every single particle through there. And once they get out of here, there's no way for them to go. They have to go down through the diode, boom, boom, boom. And then they get locked into a battery or capacitance, drive a motor, you know, they get re regulated. And you could put this in something you could carry around in your hand. Something like this, which I've been showing for years now, that inside of here, of course, it'd be watertight and all that, but you could have 220, 110 volts, 50 cycles, 60 cycles, AC, DC, any voltage you want. USB, whatever you need, could just come out of here and you'd never have to do anything. You just walk around with it like this. If you can get extra energy, and they claim with this device, you should be able to get at least 200 times, not 200%, 200 times more energy if you can separate the black from the white. And there's absolutely zero question, zero question. We did this. No question whatsoever, which is the muon neutrino and electron neutrino together, which is a Dirac neutrino, separated to a sterile muon and the electron shower coming back here. Now, 
I say we should start looking into this deeply, as I've been begging for years, so that we can get some free energy and, and maybe get ourselves out of this disaster that the world's in. All right, that's my last word. Thank you. I love you all. You see this? Even the particles in space, all of the planets and the stars and all of them, they're dipoles. Everything is a dipole. It's called dipole flood theory. And these are the dipoles. There's a black and a white together. These two together make everything there is. And 1,823 of those particles together make up a proton. So it's a particle like this, 1,823 of those. Not just one big proton with a couple of quarks screwing around in there. Now, this is the new model. It's as simple as this. this is, I mean, that's what kills them. It's called dipole electron flood theory. It solves everything. If you could come to me with any material interaction, I can solve it with dipole electron flood theory. Very simple. Electron has that dark side and it has the glowy white side. And this side burns like hell, and that side bounces like hell. It's just a big bomber. That's all it is. And I can show you when it knocks the house down. This will burn the house, and nothing moves. That'll knock the house down next. Photons are surrounded by a field. Electrons are not. They burn. Electrons will burn you. They want to incorporate into something. They'll stick onto you. They'll stick onto, like, water molecules and so forth, and just glue onto you. And then they'll jump to earth if they can get to earth earth is the is the, it's got to have a ton of extra dark matter as far as i'm concerned and we know that the dark matter can separate from the white so it's not an equal amount of each when it's coming off of the sun and off of all luminous bodies it doesn't have to come off in equal numbers and that's what because you can charge particles so we know that they can be charged particles they don't they don't have to be equal numbers it's just not not a requirement and that's why they were able to do this in space with the Russians by putting in charged particles. So to have extra white ones and, and uh, which forced the black ones into the center. There's a lot to look at here and that's what we're going to have to do is look at it. And um, like I say, this is the new, the new model. And I'm going to get deep into this because, uh, you know, I've been doing this for many years now. And Rod Warren did all of these shots, all of this stuff. Absolutely fabulous work. And um, he deserves to be recognized for that. Look at that. That's just stunning. That is absolutely stunning. Now, that's one color light. So this is what... Fairy Lab and CERN get, they get just splashes because they're hitting all the colors together at the same time. Big balls, bam, boom, bam, and they just go flying. And then they find these little tiny red particles and they find these other particles taking off and never coming back again because these are the point of collision of massive particles. What we did was we just sent one particle, which is this particle right here. And it smashes right in here. This is just one single, uh, uh, you know, uh, pulse red laser. Now, let's see what happens when these particles separate in an atomic bomb blast. Because this is basically the same thing. Right here is where the bomb goes off, and the black separates from the white. The white is pushed ahead violently. Now, we are not letting the black go. We're keeping the black behind. In an atomic bomb blast, everything goes. First the white goes, and the black comes behind it. The white burns the house, doesn't move it, then the black pushes the house down. Here, we keep, we kept the black from getting through, All right, which is much more efficient. Let's see, here it is right here. See, we kept the black on this side. This should be just scads of extra electrons, absolutely scads, bazillions of them. And then we just drive that down into our harvesting device. All right, so here we are right here. 
right after the venturi and we put a, this right here we send that down pulsing bam 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 because every time this thing pulses everything in front of it is being pushed and if you had enough lasers pointed in uh, you were more or less making a dome around this so that the black particles are hitting from every angle they, the white can't squirt back out you could basically just make a hose out of this just an absolute gush of white particles and different frequencies and all you could play around all, all day long and figure th things out but eventually what you're going to get out of here is a gush pulsating gush and that pulsating gush of electrons goes through our photo which means photons diode which means it can't get out once it gets past poof 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 that's what happens when you charge a battery that's all you're doing the same thing identical no difference whatsoever and <laughs> and with the right transition metals which are all these different colored metals which have different frequencies that they absorb on thin film we can absorb all this and make you know they they absorb 70 percent extra right away just by putting in green light or something and this is the new model right here there's a lot of work i got to do on this year. well not really it's pretty close but it's not, I had 1835 or 1838 electrons or something, but it's 1823 is what I come up with now. So anyway, uh, if somebody would like to get a hold of me, that'd be fine. Because we're going to, we have to change, the, the standard model doesn't work, never did work. And I knew this back when I was going to college, 1970 and 1968 I was in the army working on Nike Hercules missile systems I, I took a deep interest it's, I, that's just the way my mind works and I realized that these guys are all wrong <laughs> that everything has to be a dipole you can't have it just a big huge gigantic positive in the center and have one little tiny negative why would they not go there's just no sense to it and plus, they have the same charge, only opposite. It's just insanity. Although, it does have some rationale now that I understand it, but I understand the, the complexity of it, and they don't. They, they were just like one fixed little particle, the other little particle, that's all there is to it. Anyway, let's get, uh, let's get deep into this. Although, I do feel a 100% vindicated... Whoops, hold on. All right, this is basically what's happening, is all of these light particles are in the front coming forward, and you'll see all the air will just start glowing like crazy, and then those will hit the house, and then the house will just burn up. Then comes the black particles behind it, which are pushing the white particles ahead of them. The black ones are the pushers, the pushers and the shovers. The white ones push everything away from each other. The black ones just push everything ahead of them if they're moving, and they are pulsed in these red laser, pulsed lasers. So every one of these is a pulse of particles followed by the black particles. This will burn the house, and then that part will knock the house over. Now I'm running this at 25% speed, so and it's already slowed down. So we're going to see this interaction. This is Adam Central and uh, AdamCentral.com. T pot apple II q house atomic bomb effects now watch this the first thing you'll see is there'll be a huge glow of whiteness all right get ready boom now i'm going to stop it right here this is the glow of every particle in the air just like i showed you in the um picture of the light coming across is doing this so everything's glowing, but there's something pushing these particles out, and it's the black particles. So here, what will happen is the house just burns up, because the white ones are just so many of them interacting. That's this coming out, slamming here. Now, boom, now comes the black particle. All right. So if the original was here. Watch, just oh, nothing but burn. It's nothing but these things interacting with all the combustibleness there. 
and now that's pretty much gone. Now comes the black. Now watch, it'll all turn around and come back because there's a huge void back there. It has to come back to that dark mass that's back on the tarmac where they blew up the bomb. All right, so I feel 100% validated now that they have done this using basically the same thing I've been talking about. These are my claims on the new standard model, what the particles are like, what the atomic core is like, and how they surround. This is still up in the air, some of this. I'm not sure whether there's, there's, there's particles are surrounding other particles or whether the whole thing surrounds one thing in the center. This is work to do, but a lot of it's been validated now, especially with this. And if they will start looking at this, I think we can get somewhere. All right, thank you. I love you all. Okay, I'm just going to leave it at this. We're going to go into this as deep as deep gets. Physics start, has to start over. It's 100% different than what they told us. There, it, it, well, as you're going to see, it is nothing like what we were told. And they know the standard model doesn't work. They just had no replacement for it, and now we do. And this is physical. It's, an ev it's evidence. It's not just theoretical. So stick with me if you want to learn physics, because it's going to have to start all over again. I don't care how many PhDs you have in physics right now, you're, you just don't understand physics. Because you were told to say things that just aren't right. These are the things that are correct, and they're validated, and they're easily disputed and discussed. I'm glad to discuss this with anybody, especially... Don Lincoln from Fermilab, that's what, who I'd love to discuss this with. Or Kirsty Duffy, the people that are at Fermilab, or the people that are at CERN, the same thing. I went to the University of Geneva, and I discussed this with my professors there long ago. And then things changed at CERN, and they started doing stuff, stuff very, very similar to what we're doing here. I don't know if I had any influence on that or not. But I certainly showed them everything we did in 2015, 2016, maybe right in that era, I can't remember. But, um, and they listened. So anyway, this is what we got. Let's move forward on this. Somebody's got to stand up.